The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will rise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. In our Gospel today, Jesus refers to Jonah. And he must have really liked the story of Jonah in the Hebrew Scriptures, because three different times Jesus refers to Jonah in, the, in his teaching and when he gathers crowds. And it's easy to see why, because there's a great comparison. Jonah's almost a prefigurement for what Jesus is going to do. Jonah was sent to teach repentance and forgiveness to the people of Nineveh. Jesus came to do the same thing for all of us. Jonah spent three days in the belly of a whale. Jesus spent three days in the earth after his death prior to his resurrection. There's great similarity there, and Jesus points to this and says, you people want a sign? You're always asking for a sign. Look, look to Jonah. He was a sign for the people of Nineveh. He came to tell them they needed to repent. And because of him, they changed their lives. The problem is with you, you want a sign. But when the sign comes, you don't believe it. And you won't change your lives. I think he's speaking directly to our world today because our world today says we need a sign if we're going to believe. Well, we, we have that sign. We have an awesome sign. We have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. He's here in the tabernacle. But people don't believe. God gives us signs and we say, no, I don't like that sign. Give me a different one. Or that one's not spectacular enough for me. Give me something glitzy, you know, something Hollywood would come up with. He has given us the most awesome of all signs. He's given us his son. He's given us his son who, who died on the cross. Oh, my gosh. What a fantastic sign the crucifix is. We have the signs. We just choose not to follow them. And it's very sad because a, a, a half Catholics or more don't believe that that's really Jesus. So if Catholics don't believe it, how are we going to convince the rest of the world? At your baptism, Jesus says to you, you are a sign. All of us are sent into the world to be that sign. And if we look at the news and we say, boy, our world is really screwed up, what is God thinking? Well, God is saying, wait a minute. I put you in the world to change it. Why aren't you doing your job? Those of us that are baptized are called to be that sign in our world, that sign of God's love, that sign of God's living presence, that sign that he is here with us. And if we don't do our job, let's not blame God. You see, my friends, you are called to be that sign. 
You are called to be those people that let the world know of our God's goodness and love. I would say this because you all go to many places where Father Saul and I will never be. You will go to soccer fields, you'll go into jobs, you'll go into schools, you'll go into many places, uh, even hospitals, Dr. Cushing, you, you, you go in all kinds of places. You need to be that sign wherever you go. Because my friends, you may be the only gospel that some people hear. You may be the only face of Christ that some people ever see.